Welcome back, friends. My name is Dan Vega, and today we're talking about AWS Lambda Snap Start. Specifically, what does it mean to you as a Spring developer? So I'm looking at this article that was written up about the product. It was just announced at reInvent 2020. And AWS Lambda Snap Start is a new performance optimization developed by AWS that can significantly improve the startup time for your applications. So currently, this is only available for Java in certain regions. But again, Java is what's usually affected by cold start times. This feature delivers up to 10x faster function startup times for latency sensitive Java applications. Here's the kicker, at no extra cost and with no or minimal code changes, which is really, really nice. The example that we're gonna look at today, there's no code changes, which I love. So I will leave a link to this article in the description below. You'll want to read through this if you really want to understand how does this work. It does it by taking a snapshot of your function and caching it, basically. There's a little bit more to that on how it works. Um, there are some edge cases where that may not be the desired outcome. So there are some hooks into kind of solving some of the problems that, that may come up in this. Uh, so go ahead and read through the article, understand a little bit more. But what we're going to do today is create a new project. We'll include Spring Boot. We'll include Spring Cloud Function. And we'll talk about writing this function, pushing it to AWS Lambda, and then enabling Snapstart. And we'll compare uh, the, the, the init time before Snapstart and then after Snapstart. So let's do this. Let's head over to start.spring.io and create a new project. I'm going to choose Maven as my build tool. We're going to use Java. Now, Spring Boot 3.0 just came out. Awesome. But we cannot use it for this project because we have to require Java 17 on 3.0. Uh, unfortunately, AWS does not support Java 17 yet as one of their uh, runtime environments. So we're going to have to downgrade to 2.7.6 and use 11. Now, I have reached out to a couple folks, and I do hear that they are working on supporting Java 17, but currently at the time of this recording, they do not, so we're gonna have to choose 11. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to select web as one of my dependencies and Spring Cloud Function. That's all we need. We're gonna go ahead and fill in some metadata. I'm gonna say dev.danvega, we'll call this snap start. And then what I'll do is go ahead and generate this project and it will download me a zip. I can open that up in my favorite IDE, IntelliJ. You can open it up in whatever text editor or IDE you're most productive in. So what are we waiting for? Let's hop over to the editor. Let's hop over to your IDE and let's write some code. All right, so here we are in our application and we're gonna go ahead and create a new function. Normally I would put this in a new class, but this is a very simple example. I'm just gonna put this right in our main application class, which is called Snap Start Application. So to do this, I'm going to create a new bean. Uh, there are uh, three main function types that you can declare. Uh, you can use a function, a supplier, or a consumer uh, when we're creating new functions here in Spring Cloud Function. Uh, so I'm gonna create a new function that takes in a string and just reverses it. I know pretty simple, but that's all we're gonna focus on today. So I'm going to use function, which has a input and an output. So the input is gonna be string, the output is going to be string. We're gonna call this reverse. And what we need to do is we are returning a function, which in this case is a functional interface. Uh, it has a single method in here called apply, which takes in a type. So we are going to return a lambda expression, which takes in a string. So we can use that string as an argument. Uh, what we're gonna do is get the value of, and we're going to create a new string builder from that string, and we're going to reverse it, and that is what we are going to return. So a very simple function, but it allows us to really take a look at snap start. So the one thing I love about Spring, well, there are many things, but the one thing I love about Spring Cloud Function is now I can test my application locally to make sure this works. Um, and then when I go ahead and push this to AWS, uh, we can test it there. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and run this application. Oh, and we have something in use already. So let's go ahead and go to the terminal. 
And if we look at JPS, we have a demo application running on 91915. So we can just do a kill dash nine, nine one, nine one five. So JPS and we should be okay now. So let's go ahead and try and run this application again. Much better. Now let's head over to the browser and test this out. So I'm gonna go to localhost 8080 and then the name of the function. So that is reverse. And then I can go ahead and add the input string. So I'll just say some string and we'll see that the uh, result is that string in reverse. So nothing terribly exciting, but now what I wanna do is build an artifact that I can use and publish on AWS. So how do we do that? So I will leave a link to an article I wrote for the Tanzu Developer Center. It's a free article you can check out called Serverless Spring, and it has some of these details in here. But ultimately what we need to do is we need to add one dependency here. So we're gonna add a dependency. This is the Spring Cloud Function Adapter for AWS. So we're gonna pull that in. Um, and then what we're gonna do is down here in the build plugin section, I'm gonna add a few more. Um, so this again is coming straight from the article, which comes straight from the documentation. So I'm just adding this in. So what this allows me to do now is from my terminal, I can go ahead and run maven clean package. And that was successful. And the result of that is in our target folder, we have a couple of artifacts now, one of which is an AWS specific version that we can go ahead and upload to AWS. So what we're gonna do is head over to the AWS Amazon Council, and we'll go ahead and upload this function and test out some init times before and after Snapstart. All right, so I'm gonna create a new function here. We're gonna author from scratch. I'm gonna call this spring cloud function reverse. Again, we have to pick a runtime here. So I am choosing the Coretto 11 runtime and we're gonna go ahead and create our function. All right, the first thing we need to do is go ahead and upload from our zip or jar, and that is going to be located in the target directory, and we wanna pick that AWS specific one. Next, go into the runtime settings, and when you're asked for a handler, the handler is always gonna be the same for a Spring Cloud function. Again, this is back in that article if you wanna reference it. So we're gonna go ahead and click save. At this point, we can go ahead and test out our function. Now, we don't need to create an API gateway or a function URL because we only have a single function in there. So it will default to that function. If you have multiple functions, there are some strategies that you can take, but we don't need to do that for this. So for our sake, we can come in here and go to test and we need to test a simple string. So I'm gonna go ahead and test hello world and we can go ahead and run test. And you'll see this will take a little bit, uh, a few seconds here. And hopefully it succeeds and it does. And you could see that we get the hello world in reverse. Now you can see the init duration for this was 4788.92. So almost five seconds. Uh, you can see the actual duration here of what it took to run that. Now, if you go ahead and test this again, you should see that that improves significantly. So 2.29 milliseconds, big change. So again, this is kind of what, what has plagued Java when it comes to kind of serverless, right? That is the cold start time, the time that it initially needs to go ahead and run everything uh, is pretty slow. That's why we have things like GraalVM, uh, that's why Spring Boot 3 has uh, the ability to build native images. It's going to solve that problem. And Snap Snapstart solves this problem as well, and we'll take a look at how we can solve it. So remember that first number was almost five seconds. How do we add Snapstart to this? So now we can go into Configuration. We can go to Edit. We can come down to Snapstart, and we can say Published Versions. So again, the supported runtime right now is Java 11. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Under versions, I'm gonna publish a new version. So let's go ahead and publish a new version. You can have a version description if you need to, uh, but that is optional. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit publish. And now you will see creating version two of function SCF reverse. Snapstart adds a few minutes to the version creation process. So. 
through the power of editing. We will wait for this to happen and we will be right back to see the results. All right, so that was successfully created. We can go back to test and we're gonna run a new test. Again, the same test that we did before. We'll say, hello world. And this time I'm gonna go ahead and click test. And you see that was really uh, much faster than that first time. If we go down and check this out, you see the restore duration. Again, that's how you can kind of tell the difference, init duration versus restore duration. So restore duration was 351 milliseconds versus almost five seconds on that initial cold start. So a very, very big difference. When the documentation said significant, they were not lying. That is a big, big difference. And again, if we go ahead and test this out again, uh, we're looking at 20.1 milliseconds. So the subsequent requests were never an issue here with Java, right? It's always that cold start time and this solves a very big problem. So really excited to see. Um, I haven't, this is really just a first impression running this through some basic Java examples and a basic Spring Cloud function examples. I obviously want to test this out with more, uh, some more in-depth testing on functions that do a little bit more, talk to a database, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but my initial impressions are, wow, I'm really excited to see this, uh, to see this get used more. So if you have some questions on this, let me know in the comments below. Also, give me some feedback. Are you excited about this? Does this change your perspective on writing serverless functions in Java? Uh, I know, you know, between this and GraalVM, it has for me. Uh, so I'm excited about some of the apps that we're going to be able to start building with this. So hey, if you found value in this video, as always, friends, do me a big favor and just leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. That really helps me get this in front of other developers like you. And as always, happy coding, friends.